In this popular Nickelodeon show, which is also now on Netflix, it's called Avatar the Last Airbender. And in this show, there's these four different nations. There's water, there's earth, there's fire, there's air, and there's a flying bison named Appa. All right, and Appa is really awesome in the show. Basically, he's like a 10 ton flying bison with six legs. Come on, one, two, three, four, five, six. Have you seen an animal like that? Now, the question is this show, which has amazing fire bending and water bending, people manipulating all these different elements, is it actually possible for a six legged, 10 ton flying bison to actually fly? And we're going to analyze the physics of APA in this video. Can an animal the size of a city bus actually fly through the air? <sighs> Stay tuned and find out. Da, 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 da. So to answer that question, we have to figure out, is there anything in our world that we've seen and observed that can actually fly? Well, there's birds, but they have wings and they are really light and they flap them. There's helicopters, but they have these blades that spin around really fast. Is there anything that can like, essentially like, just kind of swim through the air? Hmm. Well, get a load of this. Real. Airplanes. Airplanes are devices that are huge, and yet they're able to fly through the air, pick up speed, produce lift, all of the above. So what's so special about airplanes that allow them to fly through the air? So to answer that, we're going to talk about something called fluids. Fluids are mediums or things that flow. Anything that flows is considered a fluid. Now, there's lots of different types of fluids, but we're going to focus on the two from the Avatar world. Water and pff, air. All right. Now, Appa uses air bending. He's essentially swimming or flying through the air. Air is a type of fluid. It's a medium um, that allows him to kind of use those air currents to kind of produce lift. So let's talk about how that's possible without him actually having to flap his wings. Now, when you look at an airplane. Airplanes actually travel through the air by actually flying really fast through the air and the shape of their wing produces something called an airfoil. Now the airfoil is shaped very specifically so that air flows above it and below it at different speeds. And because the air is flowing at different speeds, it actually produces lift on the foil. That's because of something called Bernoulli's principle. Now Bernoulli's principle says that fast moving fluids create areas of lower pressure because the molecules of the fluid are more spread out and thus become more dense. So let's look at an example of the wing of an airplane, or well, the general shape of an airplane in general. So they modeled the airplane wing to look like something like this. Now there's going to be air that goes above the wing and air that goes below the wing, but the air above the wing has to travel much farther because it has to go above this, this wing and around it. So the molecules above the wing are going to be much, much more spread out and so they're going to collide with the wing a lot less. And the molecules down here are going to collide with the wing a lot more, producing lift. So low density up here, high density down here, is going to make the airplane float. This only happens if you have fast moving fluids. And fast moving fluids spread out, so they allow lift. Now, you can see this effect modeled through a demonstration here. Here I have a, a piece of paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let the piece of paper hang down like this. And we blow air above the paper. And you're gonna think like, well, isn't the air just gonna push the paper down? But let's see what actually happens. Oh my goodness! I'll do that again. Did you see that? Did you see that? When I blew air above the paper, there was air traveling fast. That fast air produced produced areas of low pressure here, basically low density because it's spread out. And the area uh, and the pressure down here was the same as it was always. So the pressure down here was large, pressure up here became much smaller, so it produced lift. It actually lifted up on the paper. Oh man! So the question is then, 
can ABBA, this huge flying bison, actually produce lift? And the answer is yes. In fact, he can if he flies fast enough. So this kind of modeled ABBA here. We have ABBA flying to this direction. And as he flies, he's going to meet some air molecules. Some of those air molecules are going to go up around him like this. Some of the air molecules are going to go down below him like that. And indeed, Abba has just the right shape. He's almost shaped like an airplane wing. Look at that. That's Abba's shape. He's essentially shaped like an airplane wing. And because he's an airbender, he's able to produce speed and use those air currents to kind of swim through the air, essentially. So the question is then, how fast does Appa actually need to fly in order to fly? At some speed, speed, if he's not fast enough, he's just going to fall down. All right. If he goes a certain speed, he should be able to fly. So let's try to figure out what is the minimum speed that Appa needs to fly. In order to figure out how fast he needs to move, we can use the Bernoulli's principal equation. Now the Bernoulli's principal equation is actually just conservation of energy. Let me explain. It's really just that. The work done on APA, let me specify, the work done on APA, so the ability to produce lift, is equal to the change in kinetic energy of the fluid that APA is going through. So, in other words, if I change the kinetic energy of the fluid by a lot, I produce a lot of lift. Now, if APA were swimming in water, he doesn't have to go very fast because the mass of water, if were, um, this is one half mv squared, the mass of water is not very, it is really heavy compared to air. So he doesn't have to go as fast. The V doesn't have to be very large if the mass is very large. The work done on APA can be written as the force on APA times the displacement, the height that he travels, essentially. Okay. So here's the equation we have. We have the force on APA times the displacement of APA equals one half times the mass of the air times the velocity of the air which would also be the velocity that he would travel through the air. Well, let's kind of simplify this a little bit. I don't know the mass of the air. I don't know that. That's like, how much air is it? Like, I can't weigh it. But there's something else that I can know. The density of air. The equation for density, this is the symbol for density, it's rho, equals mass over volume. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by volume. So I do that, if I divide this side of the equation by volume, mass divided by volume is density. That's the density of the air. If I divide this side by volume, well, maybe we can work with that. Force divided by volume, that doesn't mean anything, but displacement divided by volume, let's think about that. Let's look at the units. The units for displacement are meters. The units for volume are cubic meters. So we're taking meters and divided by cubic meters, which is the same thing as just divided by meters squared. So if I divide by meters squared, the thing that measures meters squared is area. So displacement over volume is the same thing as saying one over area. Well, force over area is equal to pressure. That's the definition of pressure. It's force over area. So there we have it. Here's another way to write Bernoulli's equation. Pressure equals, or I guess the change in pressure, is equal to the change in 1 half times the density of the fluid times the velocity of the fluid squared. Oh, so let's try to figure this out. So here's what we have. We have an equation that says that the pressure difference is equal to one half times the density times the velocity of the fluid squared. Remember that pressure is a force over area, so force over area equals one half density times velocity squared. Now, let's actually rearrange this just to figure out for that force. What is the amount of lift force that you would need? Well, I would need to multiply both sides by area. If I multiply this side by area, I just get force. Multiply this side by area, I get this. Awesome. So this is actually the lift force. The amount of lift force is equal to 1 half times the density times the velocity squared times the area, the surface area of APA. Now that just means that if APA has a bigger surface area, he doesn't have to travel as fast. Oh, that kind of relates to like, like 
That kind of relates to like parachutes. Think about a parachute. If it's a really big surface area, it's not going to travel as fast. Now the lift force is also equal to the drag force. So let's think about what does that mean. So let's imagine Abba's flying in through the air. Alright? Or you can just think about this picture right here. What are the forces acting on Appa as he flies? Well, we have gravity, which is figured out by the mass of Appa times acceleration of gravity. Right? We have lift force, which we'll say is equal to gravity, assuming he's going at a constant height. So we have that one half rho b squared times a. Now, it's not always 100% efficient this lift force, meaning that Appa is not exactly shaped, like to find the surface area of Appa, we're going to need to find like the surface area that Appa covers, but there's all these little grooves and stuff in between. So there's something called a drag coefficient, C. I'll get back to that in a second. We have the drag force, which is also equal to this exact same equation, one half rho v squared area times drag coefficient. And then we also have his thrust, and planes would use his thrust. If the thrust of the engine is pushing him forward, here Op is using his air bending to push forward. So if he's going at a constant speed, it's, that's going to be his applied force, which would equal the drag force. So those are the four, four forces acting on his applied force, the drag force, those cancel out. The lift force and the force of gravity, those cancel out, so he is going at a constant speed flying through the air. And actually, all four of these forces cancel out because he's in equilibrium, assuming he's going to constant velocity. So this force equals this force equals this force equals this force. That's kind of cool. <sighs> so what does that mean for Appa? He wants to fly, but he needs to have a certain velocity to fly. So, we know those forces have to equal each other. So I can write down that mg has to equal one half rho b squared times a times c. So let's define what each of these variables are. m is the mass of appa, g is the acceleration of gravity, rho is the density of air, b is the velocity, a is the surface area of appa, and c is the drag coefficient. I'm going to rearrange this equation to solve for v. So the velocity that he would have to travel would equal at least 2mg over pack. So now we need to find values for all of these. Now, 2 is already given. The mass of Appa, if you look at this right here, da, 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 da. and you translate it, it actually says that Appa weighs 10 tons. Now, it's actually converted to metric tons, T O N N E S, which just means that M is 10,000 kilograms. That's huge! He's a big boy, all right? It's like bigger than a city bus. G is acceleration of gravity. Now in Avatar world, we don't know what the acceleration of gravity is on the Avatar planet, whatever that would be. Uh, but we'll just assume, let's say he's on Earth, the acceleration of gravity on Earth is 9.81 meters per second per second. Now the density of air changes. As you increase altitude, the density of air goes up. It also depends on temperature but it generally averages to about one kilogram per cubic meter. Nice rounded number there, one kilogram per cubic meter. Now for the surface area of Appa. This is a tough one. Now if you look at Google, the average surface area of a human is about 1.8 square meters. And I estimated that Appa, according to this picture, is about 20 angs long and 10 angs high. So if you take 1.8 times 20 times 10, uh, 10, you get 360 square meters. Holy guacamole, that's a lot of surface area, Appa. Sally's Appa's surface area was about 360 square meters. All right, the last thing they take care of is the drag coefficient, which depends on the shape of Appa. If you notice, the Appa is not exactly a perfect shape. He's got all these little grooves and stuff into him, and the air is going to kind of hit those grooves. So the drag coefficient is dependent on the shape and which angle he's moving. Well, he's moving this direction through the air, so you have to find a shape that matches up that drag coefficient. So here's a couple shapes to check out. We're going to try to match Appa's shape the best we can.
So if you visualize Appa's shape, here's a couple common shapes that uh, have known values for Dre coefficients. And we're going to try the best to kind of match Appa's shape with one of these. Now if you look at Appa, he's kind of like a mix between a bullet and airfoil. So what we'll do is we'll kind of estimate, because um, the airfoil is like 0.045, very streamlined, where a bullet is a little bit less, 0.295. So maybe I'll go like in the middle of those, like 0.15. I think that's probably a decent um, estimation of APA's drag coefficient. So then using the value of 0.15, there's no units on drag coefficient because it's almost like an efficiency of the shape on how well it's able to travel through air. Let's put those values in to this equation here. All right, so I'm gonna go to Google. You can do a calculator in Google. I'm going to put a parentheses here and do two times uh, the mass of APA, which is 10,000 times 9.81, close the parentheses. Put the parentheses around the density of air, which is one, times the area of APA is 360, times its J coefficient, which is 0.15. And then I want to make sure that I root this whole thing. So square root of this it equals, and I get a value of 60.27, and that's going to be meters per second. So pretty unbelievable if you ask me. Can Oppo actually fly? Well, according to this, 60.27 meters per second, or 135 miles per hour, anything faster than that, if you can generate enough air current, yes, you can fly! Appa, this 10-ton flying bison from the Avatar universe can theoretically fly using physics and Bernoulli's principle. And thank you for doing that for us, because if, if not, the Fire Nation would definitely win. So, <laughs> da, 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 da. Da 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 da